So today's video, I already recorded the whole video for you guys, and we had some real good jokes about the Ryzen 7 8700F, things like me uh, losing my hair faster than I should be, going uh, bald faster than I should be, and also things like the Ryzen 7 8700F thinking it was doing a fart, but something else actually came out. And this is where I went back and checked my video footage, and I noticed one thing in the Cinebench results, and that was the temperatures went up to 95 degrees on this CPU. And this should not be happening for a CPU that's using 88 watts, and it's being cooled by a 420 millimeter water cooler. In fact, I was so confused by this result that I went and checked uh, the coverage of thermal paste. I went and checked to make sure I was making a good contact with the cooler between the IHS and that water cooler, and also even made sure my water pump was working because I thought maybe it had failed when I saw that result because it was the last test I did. The gaming numbers all looked okay. But then I realized, wow, they're probably using thermal paste. So I decided to delid the CPU, which is why I'm not gonna be recommending this CPU here today, because you shouldn't be having to delid a CPU in 2024, and soon to be 2025 at all. No one should be doing that, especially if they're paying 160-ish US dollars for a said CPU. And it's actually ironic coming from AMD that they're putting thermal paste on their CPUs now because this was the same company that was making big statements back when they were releasing Ryzen 1000 and Ryzen 2000 and they were saying, hey, we're using a soldered die to an IHS unlike the competitor. But now they're doing the exact same thing the competitor was doing to save money. And a message to AMD and Intel, please do not cut costs where you should not be cutting costs. It's that simple. I don't know any tech enthusiast that wants thermal paste between the die and the IHS. Actually, scratch that, I do, and they're usually enthusiast overclockers who use direct die cooling. But the majority of people want an IHS that's soldered to the die for the best temperatures possible. Because here's where, after I did the said D-lid and then put on just some banger GD900 thermal paste, which is like $5 a tube for a heap off AliExpress. After I used this cheap thermal paste, I then got a temperature drop of 13 degrees in the same benchmark, 13 degrees. Not to mention the gaming performance was also now slightly better than it was before when I did those tests. And also we were getting slightly higher megahertz boostage in games too. So this is a roller coaster ride with this Ryzen 7 8700F where it's just so weird because it differs from my 8400F, which I did a recent uh, look at in a separate video. I'll put the link up here. And the temperatures didn't stand out at all as being bad in that video. I wouldn't have thought that that CPU had anything wrong with it. But this one really stood out just with those bad temperatures. Again, saying that something was wrong with the CPU. But we'll talk about all that and later, let's get into some gaming benchmark results, especially for those who are curious who maybe wanna get this CPU even though they know this information already, and they wanna say, hey, the performance, what's it like in productivity, and what is it like also in gaming? Let's find out right after today's video sponsor. If you wanna get rid of this annoying activate Windows message, then today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, has you covered for as little as 15 US dollars. After you enter that coupon code BFTYC, you can cop yourself a legit single end user license today. Also works for Windows 11 Pro 2. Links in description below. Welcome back to Tech Gas City and the Ryzen 7 8700F is eight cores, 16 threads. And there is a benefit to this CPU, especially say versus maybe a 7500F or a 7700. It's just all one piece of silicon. However, with the 8700F, it does have the iGPU disabled. And also in this particular instance, it's really kind of level three cache anemic. In fact, it's worse than the 8400F in that the 8400F has the same amount of level three cache as the 8700F, and that's only got six cores, 12 threads. So the level three cache is also double on the Ryzen uh, 5 7500F, and this can show in some very small instances of gaming, we do get some 0.1% low numbers that are a bit odd, and especially at 1080p and sometimes at 4K as well. But for what it's worth, if those thermal paste issues were not there, this actually would have been a decent CPU where you can currently pick it up for around 160 US dollars shipped to your door off AliExpress. But the problem is, is if you're having to delit a CPU, 
So we will talk about this one fact before we look at these gaming benchmark numbers. If you're having to delit a CPU, then you're voiding your warranty and you've got the potential to damage the CPU as well. And so it's like a double negative minus the fact that it doesn't make it positive. And also to those who are saying, well, AliExpress doesn't give you a warranty. I've actually got a video coming out that would uh, be contrary to that. And there actually is a warranty process with AliExpress and in particular, a Ryzen CPU, which is gonna save that content for a later day. It's a very juicy video that talks about numerous things with a faulty CPU, faulty Ryzen CPU. Anyhow, let's look at the first set of benchmarks and we'll start off with Far Cry 6. And here's at 1080p, we do get a better result than the 8400F. And this is actually gonna be a trend through pretty much all the games, especially at 1080p, because the CPU is simply just clocked higher even though you have two cores and four threads more available, a lot of these games just simply don't utilize those extra cores and threads. And so a six core, 12 thread CPU is still fine, which is why you'll see actually the 7500F is slightly edging out the 8700F in a lot of these benchmarks too. And that's because, again, as we said before, that's got actually double the level three cache available. And then that's spread across six cores and 12 threads as opposed to eight cores, 16 threads. But then moving on to Hogwarts Legacy, here's where we saw slightly better performance at 1080p and 1440p and 4K. However, 4K did show an odd result. And I did test this before and after the thermal paste. And it was the 0.1% lows did suffer a little bit at 4K resolution. So perhaps that level three cache is then, um, or not having enough of it, is causing a bit of a performance detriment in this particular title. But then moving on to Gears 5, here's where we're shy of 200 FPS. We're just a bit under that. And then this extends over to 1440p. However, it starts to become GPU intensive. And then going on to 4K, there's actually very little a difference between all the CPUs on the charts here. But then moving on to Age of Mythology, here is where at 1080p and 1440p and 4K, it was giving out pretty decent performance. And there was nothing out of the ordinary here, just giving you that extra bump over the 8400F and then moving on to Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p and 1440p, they were as expected. But then moving on to 4K shows us this odd result where we got two, roughly two average FPS lower and a slightly lower minimum than even the 8400F. So that was another anomaly that was happening here. And again, just like Hogwarts Legacy, I kind of put that down to being a little bit uh, level three cash anemic. Though the final title here is Baldur's Gate 3, which I do do some power consumption tests for as well, which we'll talk about that soon. We had here just shy of 200 average FPS at 1080p. Then we went to 1440p and 4K. We start to get more GPU intensive and the results do start to taper down. Where at 4K, there's virtually no difference between all the CPUs in the charts. But what about the power consumption numbers? Here's where the numbers look okay. The 7800X3D was actually performing better here from the system, from the wall, which sort of meant that this 8700F had something a little bit weird going on in terms of the direct CPU um, power consumption numbers being reported and what was actually happening. And again, I put that down to the heat from when I was testing it because I'm using the original result here as it's more indicative of at least what I got from what I bought and what people should expect, I guess, because it is, again, 100% guaranteed to use that thermal paste. So <laughs> the numbers here were a little bit worse than they should be, I think, in terms of the power consumption numbers. However, the frequencies, this was a weird one too, because uh, after we did do the thermal paste change, this is when we were getting an extra 25 megahertz in Baldur's Gate 3, and also our Cinebench scores were then higher after we did the thermal paste change. So this one, again, guys, this is the biggest point. After we've looked at these gaming numbers and after we've looked at these productivity uh, quick benchmarks here with the power and the Cinebench scores, it's kind of confusing to say that this CPU would have been a decent recommendation. Just like the 8400F, I liked that. And I said, this is a good one, especially if there's a sale going on and you can get it for 80 bucks delivered to your door. But then we look at the Ryzen 7 8700F and it's like, well, it's nearly double the price at roughly 160 USD. And it's also for me personally with the sample that I got, and I bought that straight off AliExpress, we're looking at temperatures that are just bad. And then also you're looking at, well, the value point, you're getting an extra two cores and four threads with the same amount of level three cash, but then you're paying 
a lot more. So I think from a value standpoint, if you're a gamer and you're looking to get into AM5 and DDR5 memory, this one's not for you. I would actually much rather you go out and get yourself a 7500F or an 8400F and just call it a day. Don't feel bad about only having six cores and 12 threads. It'll do you fine for gaming. Absolutely fine, especially if you're on a budget and you're not coupling it with an RTX 4090 like we're doing here today. But then we look at the Cinebench numbers and we're getting a CPU that's scoring at least lower from my memory than a Ryzen 7 7700. And it's also matching pretty much a 7800X3D. And a 7800X3D is a gaming focused CPU with lower clock speeds in general because it's got so much level three cache available. And so for me personally, after looking at this CPU and summing everything up, even if the die was soldered to the IHS, I just feel like it wouldn't have been a great value proposition, especially in the sea of CPUs that already exist around this price point. If you want eight cores, 16 threads, maybe just go for the 5700X3D and you've got a much more attractive CPU if you want a resale in the future. Or if you want the best value, you're looking at the 8400F or the 7500F, or you might even look at something that Intel's got with say the 12400F. And so there's actually a lot better options out there if you are value conscious. And that was, again, even if it was soldered between IHS and DAI. And it's just that thing alone, again, back to that point, that point alone just makes me really shocked that this is what's going on. And this is what's coming back into tech. Seems like the never ending uh, recycling of bullshit that we get as tech enthusiasts. And this is just another one that's, yep, here we go again. So there we go, guys. Uh, for me personally, it's a no buy with the 8700F, though your mileage may vary. You might want to delit it and use some really good thermal paste and, and spend a lot of time. That's up to you. But my personal recommendation with this CPU, it's a no go, though. Do let us know in the comments section below uh, what you think of this CPU. Have you got it yourself? Have you tried it? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And with that aside, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.